a little perspective, kind of in the form of a personal confession. I do indeed shop with reasonable frequency at Harbor Freight Tools. And I go there when I'm looking for something that I don't need to be like super high quality, just functional, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. And while I'm there, well, they have a lot of interesting things that, well, sometimes stimulate impulse buys. And on one of my trips, yeah, this adorable little hammer caught my eye, and I just had to have it, and it was only a couple of bucks. But since I bought it, I put it to a surprising amount of use, a lot more than I thought I would. It's just a handy little thing to grab and go for small, quick jobs. Certainly not as powerful as a full-sized hammer, but I can literally grab it out of a drawer, drop it in my pocket and go, or stick it in a small toolkit or whatever. So yeah, it's gotten a whole lot more use than I thought it would. Now, recently Atom at JXE JXO reached out to me after my last review, so at least he knows what he's getting himself into, wanted to know if I'd be willing to check out their new mini camping and survival hatchet. And I said, well, coincidentally, I've been exploring tomahawks as uh, tools and martial implements, so kind of in the same category, yeah. I didn't necessarily expect this, though, but let's check it out. All right, I know that when most people think about hatchet, they don't think about really keen cutting edge, but as this one seems to be designed, as kind of an all-around utility tool and GXE GXO has a certain reputation in my mind already for really good edges. Well, let's check this one out. Now my test files, the steel that's exposed that I could get them on seem to put this somewhere between 50 and 55 HRC, which is really good for a chopping tool. Let's try a little paper cutting. Okay, it's gonna be that awkward, but oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There's that JXE JXO edge. How about a little cardboard? Okay, this is a little weird, but it works. A couple of interesting notes about the sheath that it came with. It's a nice thick nylon riveted together comes with a, a Velcro closure. And I think this is kind of an interesting choice. I personally would have preferred a snap for a quicker release, but the Velcro can be adjusted for snugger carry. So could arguably be more secure. Speaking of carry, another interesting choice. The one strap that's on it is designed for a belt to go here. So if you're trying to wear it on, a, on like your waistband, uh, that's really not going to work. Now, you certainly could just hook it into a belt, but I think this setup is specifically designed to attach it to a pack, which makes sense because it's a camp hatchet. Now, one other interesting note is that there is no stitching between the rivets holding the sheath together. And there might be a couple of reasons behind that, but one concern I kind of had was sometimes when I'm putting it away, yeah, that really sharp blade just comes right through one of these gaps. Uh, it's just something to be aware of. And given how sharp this blade is, I think even if it was stitched together, that, that would probably still happen. Before I run my durability and performance tests, and I am going to be well out of my comfort zone because this is the first hatchet I'm going to be reviewing. You guys have seen me review a lot of swords and knives. I've only started to explore what I like in a tomahawk. So this is some new territory. I'm going to have to figure out some new things to give you a sense of, of what this can do, what it can take, and what it might be good for. So stay tuned. But... Let's talk fit finish specs, throw out some numbers. The first number I'm going to throw out at you, 30 US dollars is what this tends to go for. And on Amazon, at least this week, it's on sale for a whole lot less than that. JXE JXO does have a reputation for giving you, well, not the highest end of materials, but considering what they're working with, very good quality, good fit and finish, very durable, and some phenomenal edges. 
And yes, you saw in the out-of-the-box cutting test, this, this is a very, very keen edge. We'll see how it holds up to a lot of different tasks, not just chopping. I'm going to see what else I can, I can find in terms of uses for this. 420C stainless steel. We'll see how this one holds up with a matte black finish. We'll see how this one holds up. The knife they sent me held up phenomenally well. Blade length on this one, three and three quarter inches or about nine and a half centimeters. Now front to back from this kind of striking pawl shape to the edge, that's five inches or about 12 and a half centimeters. And the thickness of the stock is a uniform six millimeters. Now this is a full tang construction with a rubber grip secured with one bolt. I will try to remove it and show you what's underneath. Now the tang does go through this rubber grip so you have a kind of a striking tool, impact tool projection out the bottom that also has a lanyard attachment to it. Now the rubber grip shape, that grip is four and a half inches, 11 and a half centimeters long, definitely takes its design cues from certain extrema ratio knives. Now supposedly this design maximizes comfort and grippiness with extended hard use impact. And in hand, this one feels really good. Now, they have this grip on one of their knives that I haven't gotten my hands on yet, but because of the way this feels, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued. I think I'm going to have to acquire that knife and give it, give it a look over. Overall length is 9.5 inches, about 24.5 centimeters. And I've certainly seen hatchets that are smaller than this, designed to slip in a backpack or a toolkit or an emergency kit. We'll see what I can do with this length. But because that grip is potentially removable, could I mount a longer haft onto it and make it a full-size tomahawk? Uh, there's a thought. But the weight as is, 19 and a half ounces, 553 grams. A couple of other features to point out. Yes, there's a hole in here for potentially hanging it. Big jimping on the back, not only for grippiness, but there's a lot of great edges and corners for striking a ferro rod, I found. You do have something like a guard at the top, which would allow you to hook your finger over it for uh, a higher grip. But speaking of higher grip, you got a big old space in here. You can get your hand all the way up here, and we will see how it works up here like this as well. So I think I could probably find a wide variety of uses for it. Let's go ahead and put it to some tests, and then I can hopefully give you my proper impressions.
All right, here we are post-tests. How did it do? Well, first I've got to give you my usual caveat. If you're looking for hard field bushcraft testing, it's not something you're going to see on my channel. It's not what I'm about. And in that sense, maybe it was a weird choice for Atom to send me a field tool, camping tool, survival hatchet. But I guess he appreciated my review style and thoroughness and creativity enough to, yeah, see what I would do with this. So I went ahead and ran it through a variation of my usual tests and, and then, yes, tried to get a little creative with it. Now, there wasn't any point stabbing it into my pal because it didn't, didn't have a point. So the first test, okay, I, I promised Adam I wasn't going to do this to his products anymore, but I figured, okay, this is a hatchet, not a fine razor blade of a knife. And I chopped it into the hard bamboo, which is a potentially abusive test that I use to look for a really fragile edge. Can I intentionally induce a chip or a roll? And the answer was just barely. There was enough that I could feel it, but not even really see it. And it cleaned up in nothing flat when I just rehoned the edge. So damage in that test, almost non-existent. And it felt actually pretty good during that, doing that test. I had trouble hitting the bamboo, just finding the blade of this because I'm not used to this kind of implement doing that sort of thing. But then I went ahead and carved on some boards, choking up and doing that. Uh, it, it did reasonably well at those fine tasks. I can see a lot of application there. Chopped into the boards. Yeah, it's a great chopper and feels fantastic doing it. Finish took no damage. Speaking of finish took no damage, put it through some firewood, both chopping into it and also batoning it through. Now, this is a big old wide thin blade to try to baton through something, but I made it work. And it took zero damage to the edge or the finish. Definitely better at chopping than trying to use it to baton through something, though. I'm going to say that. And then a couple of tests that I did not film. I had a bunch of knives that I was reviewing and I had a bunch of cardboard to cut up into target shapes that I plan on using on some side-by-side -side tests. So I figured I'd throw this into the mix. Is it a good cardboard cutter? Well, problem number one, I was kind of an idiot. I was trying to be too smart for my own good. So I'm thinking, oh, if I grab it like this and I cut through the cardboard, how about like this and I cut through the cardboard? And I was having some really frustrating results. And then I thought, dude, what about if you just grab it by the handle, which is like where you're supposed to grab it? And then cutting through cardboard boxes was surprisingly smooth and efficient. Yeah, did that job really well. And speaking of smooth and efficient, considering you might use this for all sorts of different things in the field, all right, I went ahead and tried it with a little bit of food prep. And that is actually a pretty keen, effective edge for cutting vegetable, meats, and yeah, you could certainly use it as a cleaver. Now, in that capacity, I actually found my best grip on the knife to be no higher than just hooking my finger over the top of that sort of quill in there. That was a great position to grab onto this thing, lock my hand in to do some really fine meat and vegetable slicing. So, Adam, thank you for sending this to me. It's been a really awesome thing to experiment with. Um, just a lot of great experiments happening here. But let's quickly talk about what kind of martial impressions I might have. I need to interrupt this video for a quick warning about the sheath. And this did not come up until I tried carrying it around for a bit. The material broke in, became a bit more pliable, and, well, a few serious concerns, which gets us into the do not try this at home danger zone. And that is, I'm going to say, as is, do not rely on this sheath to support the hatchet for carry. Why? A couple of issues. I demonstrated it's got us loop here to potentially thread through a pack strap to carry it vertically. I also added my own belt loop to do the same thing off my belt. Seemed to work just fine, but okay. Major problems. Major problem number one. If you're supporting it this way from the sheath, as soon as you try to break the strap, it will immediately drop out. Now, if your hand is there to catch it, it's really smooth, but if your hand isn't or you fumble it, I hope you're wearing some hatchet-proof footwear. 
but it gets worse. Okay, when it's hanging from my belt, it was quite a fumble job and required two hands to get it back into the sheath. I had to actually pinch it up here to hold it in place while I secured the Velcro strap down. And even securing the strap down as tight as it will go. Already mentioned that, yeah, there's no stitching here between these two rivets. As you're moving around, uh, yeah, that point begins to slip out, creates a, a cutting hazard, but it gets worse. You'll notice the hatchet is beginning to rotate, and yes, as you're walking around, it will slip out. And when it does, I hope you're wearing hatchet-proof footwear. So I think this could be fixed, though, by adding one more rivet to it. So let me try it, and, and I'll be right back. Quick fix accomplished. One rivet was all I really needed to put in two for extra security. Does now keep that blade from slipping out through that gap, which also keeps the ax from rotating in the sheath and potentially slipping out. Now, I did send this information to Adam. He got right back to me. Thank me profusely. This is a new product. He said they did have a similar issue with a similar sheath on another product a while back, so they're going to talk to the people who make their sheaths and go with a fix like this. Now, if you wind up getting this version, I'm going to say go ahead and put a rivet or stitch that or glue that or something or just, just don't carry it by the sheath. Speaking of carry it by the sheath, I'm going to say that, well, now it is, I feel secure enough to do that. I've been trying it for a bit. It's fine, but... Sheathing and unsheathing, definitely for safety, two-handed job. You're going to want to grab this with one hand to pinch that blade in there while you break it with the other. Um, take it out. Same thing you're going to have to do, obviously, putting it back anyway. So not exactly designed for quick draw. And if you want this accessible on your belt or pack, make sure it's someplace where you can reach it with two hands. All right. As usual, because it's my thing, we need to talk about martial handling and, well, my overall impressions. And when it comes to martial handling, I, I don't really know exactly where to go with this. It's certainly not as big as what I would be used to in terms of hatchet axe tomahawk. So it doesn't have the reach, and also that reach includes safety for keeping my hand out of the way while I'm hooking sharp things. Now, I do have some experience with hooking-like implements in some of my, my Japanese martial arts training. So I can see the potential use for hooking something blunt that's not going to threaten to chop off my fingers. There's a possibility there. But from my experience in Chinese martial arts, what this reminds me most of is a cleaver. And could you use a cleaver in an emergency to fend off a threat? Absolutely. So yes. Chopping, slashing, even push cutting, it's, it's there. Now, there's nothing, nothing to stab or thrust with, but you've also got blunt surfaces you could strike with. Not necessarily enough length to comfortably, that I'd, I'd want to, you know, risk parrying anything, but again, in a pinch, I might be able to get away with it, especially if it wasn't a sharp thing I was knocking out of my way. And you've got something down here you can use on the end for an impact tool. So there's all that. Grip also, very comfortable, very secure great absorption of impact. I'm really intrigued to check out knives with this grip now. But where this thing shines is in terms of its portability, value for the money, and just overall usefulness. Now there are other mini camp axes that are about this size, and if you have one, tell me what you think of yours. But this one, I think, adds a couple of things. Not only do you have other surfaces to use for striking and for, you know, striking a ferro rod or something like that, but you saw me put this to a variety of uses to give me a sense that, yes, I could use it in the field for light chopping, whether that's tree or bush trimming when I'm gardening or taking it out to make up some firewood or maybe some stakes or something like that. But I also put it to utility uses as a blade, a cleaver, for cutting up cardboard and, yes, making myself dinner. And it was very useful for that. So there's your value for the money. And the bottom line would be, would I take this with me on, say, a day trip, day hike, or a camping trip, throw it in my pack? Yeah, I would. It's got a lot of different uses to it if I don't want to carry something bigger. 
Would I throw it in a toolkit emergency kit to take with me? Absolutely I would. Would I potentially take this out in the yard and use it for those kind of tasks? Absolutely I would. Would I use it for other utility uses where I needed something that's kind of between a small hatchet and a cleaver, like my little tiny hammer came in so usefully? Absolutely I would. So I am really glad that Adam sent me this to experiment with. It's, it's been um, very interesting. But, all right, if you have any questions about this, let's get our conversation going in the comments or other small survival axes, hatchets, implements that you have. Tell me about those. As always, though, thank you for watching and following my journey and subscribing to the channel and liking the videos. And I hope to see you back for, well, whatever shows up on my doorstep next.